Raising money is hard. Traveling around the world the way I do is hard. We have 34 Jane Goodall Institutes. We have our Roots and Shoots programs to sustain in nearly 80 countries. You have to be able to convince people that what you're doing is a good thing to do. You have to find corporations. You can't just go to any corporation and say, well, it would be lovely if you gave us money. If they're doing things that are ethically, you believe are not, are not good because then your name's linked with them and people think that you're hypocritical. So in 1994, the Jane Goodall Institute began its program, Take Care or Takari, a very holistic program in which we try to help the local communities to find ways of making a living without destroying the environment. Began with a team of local Tanzanians, carefully chosen, going in and talking to the villagers and asking them what they thought we could do to help them. And that's where we began, restoring fertility to the overused farmland without the use of chemicals. And better health and education, working with the local Tanzanian authorities. And then we moved in with, with water management programs. And then, based on Mohammed Yunus's Grameen Bank, microcredit, where women could take out tiny loans for projects that had to be environmentally sustainable, like buying a few chickens or having a tree nursery. And we also introduced family planning information, and we got as many scholarships as we could to keep girls in school during and after puberty, because it's been shown all around the world as women's education improves, as women are empowered, family size tends to drop. This was so successful in the 12 villages around Gombe that we've gradually since then been extending it. And it's now involving 104 villages right throughout the chimpanzees range in Tanzania. If they decide they want to take time off and be a mother, and people say, well, that's, you know, that's like going back to the, to the old days and tying yourself with your apron strings to the kitchen. It's incredibly important, if you can, to spend time with your young child and be there for them and be supportive. So it's, 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 it's a job and it's a very hard job, but I think it's tremendously important. On the other hand, there are some women who aren't cut out to be good mothers. They just don't want to be good mothers. So then the answer is to try and find an alternative. So I truly believe for a human child, it doesn't have to be the biological mother, but that child needs, needs to feel secure, needs to feel wanted, needs to feel there is at least one and preferably two or three adults who are there to support that child. In my view, there are three major problems facing us, uh, all of which seem insoluble, but somehow have to be solved. One is crippling poverty, because when you're very poor, you destroy the environment to grow food for your family or to cut down trees for charcoal to sell to get some money, or if you're in an urban area, and that's all over the world, that's including the developed world. If you're poor in an urban area, you buy the cheapest, you have to, and they these cheap goods can be made in a way that's very harmful to the environment or causes a great deal of human or animal suffering, but they have no option. So on the one hand, you've got poverty, we need to alleviate it. On the other hand, you've got the unsustainable lifestyle of most everybody else. Some of the elite at the top are more than unsustainable, they're wicked actually. And so we have to somehow help people lift the bottom, lift the bottom the and decrease the top and then we've got human population growth. So if you put all those three together, it's no wonder we have problems of climate change and desperate pollution. Every single individual matters. Every single individual has some role to play in this life and every single individual makes some impact on the planet every single day and we get to choose what sort of impact we make.